Hey guys, welcome back to the Habs Tonight channel. This is the pregame show. You are joined by myself and Brandon. Brandon, how's it going? Good. How are you doing, Nick? Pretty good. It's been a long day, but uh, it's going to be even longer tonight. We have the game going. We've got a post-game show going tonight as well. So the Habs Tonight tonight. Whoa, ugh, wow. Habs Tonight team, I swear I'm sober, has a big night ahead of us. <laughs> I was gonna say, you must have been crushing cans and nobody was watching. But no, big game tonight. Uh, Los Angeles is in town. We all know Phil Deneau returns to Montreal. On the back of a five-game winning streak, LA Kings defeated Toronto last night. They're feeling good. Yeah. But hey, back to back. This is when the Habs got to take um take their chances. Like the LA team, they played well last night, but they are gonna be a little bit gassed. So Habs have to capitalize on this opportunity right now. That's what I'm hoping. And like you said, Philippe Dano is back to Montreal for the first time since uh signing with the LA Kings over the summer. Uh there's mixed reviews about the kind of welcome he's going to get, you know, he he's the type of guy where he's been here for a few years. He's done great services for, for this team. So it's, it's, it's a welcome back, but at some point, you know, PK got a big welcome back and after two periods he got booed. Right. So <laughs> what are you expecting from the fans tonight? I think that there's a, there has to be an appreciation what for what Phil Deneau did, especially last playoff shutting down these number one centers, uh, like Matthews and Tavares for a couple games there. And then you moved on to the Vegas series where they didn't have a C, but he still kept those offensive players from producing too much. Like he shut down Winnipeg. Um, yeah. It's just incredible what Phil Deneau can do. And eventually you knew he was going to price himself out of the Montreal team. That was yeah. back when we still thought it was going to be Suzuki, KK, Evans, Paling. Obviously that changed Wait, real quick. Off. <laughs> <laughs> that changed really quick, but he priced himself out, and that's good for him because I want to talk about Phil Deneau just quickly. Is yeah, he gave everything he had, and geez, we went on to a cup final with him shutting down these players. So, congrats on Phil for getting paid. Uh, obviously, we thought he was going to ask for more than what much all could afford at the time, which was correct. But now, with him being in LA and the defensive player is he is sorry, is he's playing second line right now with Kopitar, obviously the first line center, but having Phil Deneau there with how good he is defensively, it frees up Kopitar to be more offensive in his game. That's why you're seeing almost like a resurgence with Kopitar this year, but also Phil Deneau's line. I think Deneau got three points last night. Uh, okay. Him and Ayafalo, they're, they're doing well, so that's a lineup to watch tonight is see if Deneau and Ayafalo can keep that rhythm going because I know Ayafalo is on a – Six game point streak right now, so that's a line to watch. But also, Kopitar Deno is a good one two punch. And with Byfield, I know he's hurt, but they've got a strong center they're building in uh, LA right For now. Sure, 100%. When uh, Quentin Byfield comes back, obviously, we're assuming Phil, uh, Phil Deno is going to move to the third line, or I think they're going to keep, keep him. him, yeah, because depending on like if he keeps playing like this, obviously, you keep him on the second line and give chance to to Byfield to climb back up, but everybody's thinking he's getting paid six point what is it, six point five? What's the contract? Something. Six point something, something like that. Six six point something to play on a third line right now. But no, he's playing on that second line. He's playing extremely well. Let's hope he got it all out of his system last night because we don't want any of that tonight. Best of luck, Phil, but no luck tonight whatsoever. Um I'm expecting our boys to bounce back tonight. You know, we've got Kerry Price, who just exited the uh, NHL P uh, PA assistance pl uh, program. God, I can't talk. Jesus, I'm sorry. Um, he's back in Brasol with the boys. Saw everybody. Dom Jashalm just said he's got that aura. Dale even said it yesterday on our video. He's got that aura of being around the boys with a bit of positivity and just having the boys back together, right? So let's hope that tonight it gives an extra push to... I don't know, come out swinging, and if we do, make it last for more than one period and play a full 60 minutes. Yeah, 100%. And just quickly, for those who haven't checked out the video with you and Dale, you guys touched yes. upon uh, numerous things, Carey Price being one of them. We saw the post tonight. Let's get to this quickly. Um, here, I have it right he here. said he went to – yeah, perfect. So over the last – I actually, I'm not even going to read it. I know everybody else knows how to read, so I'll just shut up. But um, <laughs> Summarize he it. enters a residential treatment facility for substance abuse. I know this is going to be a shock. To yeah. most people, I, I'd imagine. But, I mean, good for him for coming out. He's getting ahead of it because we all know how media can be. And, and fans alike. I mean, don't get me wrong. You're in one of the hottest markets in the NHL. But for Carey Price to come out, 
and do this. I mean, it's it's incredible. He's going to help out so many people by doing this, by being open and honest. And uh, much respect to him. But like you said, it's going to bring back – I feel like the team's going to get a little bit of a jump from them, from Carey Price being back, sorry. And just I'm just happy to see him doing better, and I hope he keeps improving to being that guy we know he can be. And it's just a tremendous thing for him to be so open about this with his stature in the, I'll say the athletic world, because everybody kind of knows who Carey Price is. But I'm just happy for him. I hope he's doing well. And I hope that the team can get a little bit of a spark from it. 100% agree with everything you just said. Let's hope that, you know, John Liu here wrote a quick uh, couple steps today that his first step is going to be gym work. Dom Ducham said that Carey Price maintained his shape throughout his uh, his month away. So good on him for finding the time to actually stay in shape. Maybe it was part of his recovery. We don't know. He's going to train alone afterwards. He's going to train with the goalie coach, and then he's going to be back for full practices. So looks like he's got a good system developed with the team right now. And like Kerry says at the bottom here, you know, it's going to impact uncertainty when I will return to play. So let's hope everybody respects that and Kerry respects it too, because I don't want him to just push and say like, yeah, I'm back right away he's a competitor we all know that so let's hope he just takes the time to ease back in and so proud to have this guy on our team to come out in the market like you said the montreal market and say i was in a substance abuse uh residential uh place so you know it's it's heavy and it's uh i'm really happy to have this guy on our team to pave the way for others it's it's great to hear yeah 100 and then it kind of now that he's kind of back, I'm curious if we see Jake Allen, like a change in Jake Allen, know that Kerry's coming back. I mean, we know the team hasn't done as well. And I know Jake would like to probably improve on some things, but I, I was kind of just alluding to the lineups. And we know Jake Allen's starting. Anderson and Dvorak are game time decisions. We know Anderson is a non COVID related illness. Not yeah. sure what's wrong with Dvorak. We know Druin's out. And then for LA, I do know Jake or um, Jonathan Quick played last night. I don't think you'll see Quick again tonight. I think you're going to see Cal Peterson in net just because Quick had over 35 shots, I believe. So, yeah, had a busy um, night. <laughs> yeah, so we'll see Cal Peterson again. I imagine their lineup's going to stay fairly similar. Dowdy is still out. going to be out for a few more weeks with the knee. I'm sure he's rehabbing just so he's ready for Olympics if he does get that call. Yeah. But uh, like I was saying earlier, the Montreal team, this is when it's looking bleak. Don't get me wrong. We know that. We understand yeah. it. <laughs> We're not blind. Um, but when a team's on a back-to-back, -back, capitalize. Let's get a win in the column here. Um, yep. I, I've I kind of talked about it on a post-game show too. Is let's just see some fight and compete, eh? Like that's as fans, that's all I, I want to see: effort and compete. I'm happy with that. One hundred percent. It's those blowout losses where you start like like the game against Vegas, where we deserved a much better outcome. Leonard stood on his head. You got to give him credit for that. But, you know, they're missing. We're basically playing their AHL team and played a full 20 minutes and then that was it. So I'd rather see us lose in overtime or a 2-1, to 3-1, to 4-3, to three, like a one-goal gap. Just some effort, like you said, to at least have a bit of positivity come out of it. Like right now, my positivity is Suzuki. Let's talk about him for a second. He's 12 points in 12 games or 13 games or something. Yep. This guy he, calls himself out. We talked about Adele and I yesterday. He calls himself out, puts himself on the hot plate and says, this is my worst game. I need to be better. Next game, scores, and then he's consistent from there. So I love it. Yeah, absolutely. And that's one thing now with, with Suzuki rolling. Um, I'm curious if Suzuki not doing as well as he wanted kind of impacted Cole. Because when you have Suzuki at his best, his line mates flourish, right? We see Toffoli and we see Galley now putting up points. They're playing well. And uh, I'm hoping maybe when Caulfield does come back up, if he does, I, I'm not sure what they're going to do. Um, if yeah. Suzuki's still rolling, you got to put him back with him because we know that chemistry. But uh, going back to tonight's game, that's another guy I want to see keep rolling, Suzuki. Uh, he took the pressure. He puts it on himself. He owns it, which I love, and he stepped up, which I love. I just want to see him keep going because I think he's almost similar to – not the same style, but like Gallagher, when he drags the team into it, I'm kind of hoping Suzuki and Gallagher can start dragging these guys into that fight. And mm -hmm. if they play the, if they play 60 minutes like they did against Vegas the first period, I got no complaints. If you win, lose, playing oh, like that, I do. don't mind. Me too. You're leading a period with 
20 to one for shots. I mean, th these guys were all over the place. So you love to see it. Let's hope it can keep going. Um, I wanted to touch on quickly if Dvorak ends up playing, he's a guy I'm going to be watching very closely tonight. Haven't been seeing as much as I thought we would from him. He's one, like he's got an awful stat right now. He's minus 13. He's second worst in the league for plus minuses right now. I know sometimes we say like, let's not talk about plus minuses, but it's a stat I hope that he can work on and change because I don't know. I, I'm not impressed with him as much as I was in the preseason. So He's the guy that I'm looking closely tonight, if he's playing, of course, to to step it up and maybe maybe light it up a little bit. And that, that's what brings my curiosity is him being a game time decision. I'm curious if he's just been playing with a nagging injury this whole time. We're not really seeing There's the true that. Dvorak or, or we haven't seen the Dvorak. And I think maybe I'm not sure if the pressure of the Montreal market kind of gets to him a little bit or he's just off. Once again, it's new teammates, new system. New everything, new city. That could be it as well. But like, I think he can be better. I mean, we've seen some of his highlights in Arizona. The guy, the guy is good. Don't get me wrong. He's a two C. Sure. He leads the Habs in faceoffs one. So he's an integral part of the centers. But I, th I think he's got more in his tank. And I'm just curious if that injury that he's kind of game time decision. I'm wondering if that's been nagging him because he did he did look good in preseason. You're 100 right. So that's a guy I like to watch tonight. And I, I think you're going to see. Jeff Petrie start turning it around. I think he's finally – I think he's kind of getting over that hump where he's – I think he put too much pressure on himself with Weber being out. And then when his D partner, Edmondson, hasn't played yet again this season, they've been they've been mixing up his partners and stuff. And I think Petrie put a little bit too much um, responsibility or pressure on his shoulders. So I'd like to see him get loose and play like he can because normally when Jeff Petrie's playing well, it's his skating. It's his shot from the point that he gets through. It's yeah. getting up in the rush. And we're not seeing the same Jeff Petrie as we did last year. So I'm really hoping he turns around. And I think you're going to start seeing him turn around soon, especially with the addition of Joel Edmondson soon. Yeah, Joel Edmondson is going to make the biggest difference, I think, in this uh, in the pairings as well. He Dale said it yesterday. Jeff Petrie, give him another maybe five, seven games maybe to get back into a mid season form. He played late last year. He, his finger was basically dislocated. So we don't even know if, I don't even know if he got the surgery for it. Maybe it's still a nagging injury, but he's not himself. Like you said, we, we know his quality that he can bring. He's not bringing it a lot, a lot lately. So let's hope that tonight he switches that around, eases it up, go back to basics. All the team needs to go back to basic basics in my opinion. <laughs> Yeah, and another one I want to see get rolling too because he is so good when he's on is Yol Armia. When that guy is rolling on the four check, winning puck battles, winning board battles, this guy he's has got insane. first, second line talent and his skill set of winning puck battles and stealing pucks and then his hands as well. If he gets rolling, it's, it's been a weird year so far for the Montreal Canadiens, I find, because the talent is there. It's just like the cohesive or – collective producing. fight isn't there it, it, it's a weird season so far 100 percent. we have a lineup to be top 10 right now and we're just like we're not even close so yeah. it, it's frustrating for sure and we know that you as fans like it's hard to sit through games where it's not like it's not easy to watch it's frustrating you you're giving up but it's what 14 games in tonight there's still time. I know we keep saying there's still time, but there is still time. You're not in the final 10 games here. It's not in the final stretch. So let's hope that the boys turn it around tonight. Should be a good one with Phil Deneau coming back again. Let's hope that he got it all out of his gas tank yesterday. I don't wish him any luck whatsoever tonight. And um, apart from that, like we said, subscribe to the channel. Uh, we've got great new content and clips coming out. Yesterday, Dale and I did a quick, uh, well, quick, pretty long video touching on the uh, story with Kyle Beach. This is still a trending story today. It's not going well at all in that department. So chances are we're going to touch on it again pretty soon. So Kyle Beach, we just spoke about Cole Caulfield. We spoke about the Canadian struggle lately. So Dale is back on the show and gave, gave his opinion. So I don't know if you want to close us off here, but uh, it's all yours, buddy. Yeah, absolutely. So don't forget, post-game show live tonight after the game. So make sure you tune into that. And uh, obviously the Crush and Can stuff, the O'Toole de la League, uh, the, the interviews with Dale, everything, just subscribe. And also, don't forget, we are looking for a potential co-host. 
if you feel like you have what you or you have what it takes to be one, geez, I butchered that. We can't sound like me now. Jeez. Fuck. I'm gonna get <laughs> cut for one of these new ones. Um, no, honestly, if you are a positive, happy person, you don't mind being on camera, you don't mind talking, um, send us an email, habsonite at gmail.com. And yes. we will look into who wants to be a part of the show. We're looking to expand a little bit more, a little bit more coverage. And we appreciate everybody that's going to send us something. And I uh, can't wait to meet some of you guys that uh, get the call. There we go. Well said. Take there care, guys. Go. go have Enjoy go. the game, and we'll see you for the post game. Cheers. See you guys.